Escaping the matrix and becoming financially free by living off a of passive income is truly the end goal for many dividend more income focused investors out there. And in my opinion, one of the best forms of true passive income is to invest into dividend paying stocks or ETFs and generate income on a quarterly or monthly basis just by being an owner of the asset. It truly does not get any more passive than that. But what about for the investors that have a little bit less money to invest? Let's say for example, 10, 20, $30,000. Invest it into dividend paying stocks, traditionally might not seem like it can really generate any sort of decent amount of dividend income due to the fact that most dividend paying stocks or ETFs offer nothing more than maybe two, three, four, five percent But in this video, we're going to talk about multiple different methods on how investors could invest, say 10, 20, 30 thousand dollars into much higher yielding ETFs and generate significantly more income than they would with traditional methods. Now keep in mind, some of these methods might be a little bit more risky than some of the traditional methods. You know what they always say, more risk, more reward. So make sure to stick around, drop a like down below and subscribe before we get into this. So the first sort of non-traditional ETF that an investor could buy into and receive a massive amount of cash flow on a consistent basis is going to be the SVOL or the Simplified Volatility Premium ETF. Now SVOL seeks to provide investment results before fees and expenses that correspond to approximately one fifth to three tenths the inverse of the performance of the CBOE volatility index or the VIX short-term futures index, while also seeking to mitigate extreme volatility. Now in simple terms, the SVOL ETF shorts VIX positions, providing investors with an optimized exposure for monetizing massive premiums in the VIX future market. With on top of that, they have a small amount of an option overlay, which is then deployed into VIX call options to help protect against adverse moves in the VIX. Now, SVOL, relatively speaking, has performed pretty well year to date, up around 3.52%. But since the ETF's inception, it's down around 11%, but that's definitely to be made up with the massive dividends. Now, speaking of massive dividends, 16.74% trailing 12 month dividend yield, with dividends pretty consistent around the 30 cent range as of recently, and even higher a few months back. Now, for an investor that's not necessarily as concerned about massive growth appreciation, but wants to get paid consistent cash flow, and use the money to replace their job and to truly become financially free, the SVOL ETF could be a potential option to look into. The next ETF that I wanna go over and what could be a potential replacement for your current income, potentially, is the TSLY ETF or the Yieldmax Tesla Option Income Strategy ETF. Now, Tesla, the Yieldmax Option Income Strategy ETF is an actively managed fund that seeks to generate monthly income by selling writing call options on Tesla stock. Tesla pursues a strategy that aims to harvest compelling yields while retaining capped participation in the price gains of Tesla. Now, yes, you see your eyes correctly. Tesla is currently offering a distribution rate of around 52.27%, and this is because of the strategy it uses by writing cover calls on the highly volatile stock Tesla. And even though Tesla, for the most part, is pretty much trading flat year to date, it wouldn't all be good without some bad. Tesla is down 39.03%, as far as all time, but of course, not including dividends. If you include dividends, things look much differently considering Tesla does have a massive trillion 12 month dividend yield of over 50% currently, and has paid over $7.36 over the last 12 months, and this is for currently around a 13 or $14 stock. Now, because Tesla does pay a different amount on a monthly basis, it's going to be pretty hard to use something like this to really supplement your income per se, but in theory, even at a 20% or 30%, Distribution yield, that's still much, much higher than most other stocks or ETFs pay across the market. Now, there's been times historically where TSLY has actually even paid a dollar per share per month, but as of recently, the payouts have been down a little bit. But as volatility continues to spike up, things could change, and these dividends could definitely be massive once again. Now, what's even more shocking is if you just do some simple math and say $25,000 invest into TSLY, which is currently $13.26 per share, this could buy you 1,885 shares of TSLY. Now, as of last month, I think Tesla paid around 58 cents per share, which means that in theory, if you invested 25K into TSLY, last month you would have received a 1,000, almost $100 dividend, which is absolutely insane. Now, the last high yielding ETF that I actually own quite a bit of is the JP Morgan NASDAQ Equity Premium Income ETF known as JEPQ. Now, this ETF might not yield exactly as much as SVOL or even TSLY, but this ETF, in my opinion, is definitely the highest quality out of all of them. The way this ETF works is it says it generates income through a combination of selling options and investing in U.S. large cap coral stocks, seeking to deliver a monthly income stream from associated option premiums and stock dividends, 
So basically, Jeff Q buys into a high quality bucket of different stocks and then sells cover calls on them. And with doing so, it seeks to deliver a significant portion of returns associated with the NASDAQ 100 index, which is a really high quality basket of stocks, but with less volatility because of the cover call overlay. Now, JEPQ year to date, because of the underlying holdings, is up 14.24%, which is super impressive. On the max time frame, it's actually down 3.81%. But considering the amount of dividends that JEPQ has paid, I don't think anyone's really complaining. Now, JEPQ has a trillion 12 month dividend yield of around 11 or 12% and it's paid around $5.53 over the last year. Now, JEPQ also does not pay a really consistent dividend on a monthly basis, although there has been times historically where it's paid pretty close to the same, but it's really going to be based off of things like volatility and how the market trades within that monthly time frame to see how much of a distribution that JEPQ is going to pay on that given month. But that being said, for the most part, since JEPQ's inception, it's paid anywhere from around $0.40 cents ish to maybe $0.60 cents as a high, to maybe almost $0.70 cents as of the high, but pretty consistently, if we'd average it out, probably around $0.50 cents per share per month. Now, that being said, because JEPQ does have a much lower dividend yield than the others, SVOL and TSOY, it's definitely going to take more money invested into this one in order to truly escape the matrix, quit your job, and live off the distributions. But that being said, some of the different ETFs that we went through today offer things like higher growth potential and maybe higher dividends and everything else in between. So when it comes to actually building out a portfolio of some of these really high yielding ETFs, you have to be aware that even though things like TSLY might pay a 50% plus dividend yield right now, it doesn't mean that there aren't still major risks associated with it. Considering like I showed you, TSLY is down almost 40% on the max time frame. So if you bought shares of TSLY back just a few years ago, you are now sitting at almost a 40% loss. But again, if you add up those dividends that you're paid along the way, you're still sitting pretty nice. Now, to get an even more accurate view on how these different names that we went over in this video have performed, just to be completely transparent over multiple different time frames, if we use the metric total return, which is dividends plus share price return or loss included, over the last six months, all three of these have done pretty well. Tesla up 9.9%, JetQ up almost 12%, and SVOL almost up 14%. Year to date, they have all been crushing it. TSLY is up 60% plus year to date. JEPQ 23.9 and SVOL around 17. Now, because some of these have not even been around all that long, we can't really go off of that many time frames. But as you can see so far, even with some of the share price decay, if you include dividends and look at things on a total return basis, these ETFs have performed pretty well so far. So there we have it. Those are three different high yielding ETFs that could, in theory, allow any investor with a small amount of money, relatively speaking, to escape the matrix, quit their job, and potentially even become financially free. Now, just a quick word of caution as far as these high yielding ETFs, these are all things that I personally use as a small portion of my overall portfolio. And I like to invest my money into more slow and steady growers like low cost index funds. But hey, there's something out there for everyone in the stock market. And if perhaps some of these higher yielding ETFs meet some of the requirements that you're looking for in an investment vehicle, then by all means have at it. But now I want to hear from you guys down below out of all three of the different ETFs that we talked about in this video, SVOL, TSLY, and JEPQ. If you could only hold on to one of them for whatever reason, which one would it be and why? If you enjoyed this video, make sure to please drop a like in it and subscribe for more future content like this. Thanks as always for stopping by and if you are interested in investing, make sure to check out these recent videos I posted right here.